Module 1 covers aspects of the ultrasound exam. Modules 2 and 3 will cover the characteristics of ultrasound equipment and official statements. A brief quiz follows each module with a pass rate of 70% correct answers. Module 1 meets published criteria for OB and GYN ultrasound training and meets AMA Category 1 credit criteria. This course will cover aspects of the ultrasound exam and will include the performance of transvaginal ultrasound, curvilinear transducer probe placement on the maternal abdomen, including details of maternal and fetal orientation, ultrasound image storage, and transducer cleaning. Transvaginal ultrasound can be performed in the first trimester prior to 14 weeks gestation. The objectives are to confirm the pregnancy, visualize and locate the gestational sac, and confirm fetal viability. Multifetal gestations can be evaluated and effective pregnancy dating can be achieved. After approximately 11 weeks, basic anatomy can be assessed. This image represents a transvaginal ultrasound of gestational sac. In the first trimester, fetal cardiac activity can be assessed. This image demonstrates the yolk sac and the amnion. Transvaginal ultrasound in the first trimester allows for the evaluation of multifetal gestations. In this image, a twin pregnancy is identified. The steps for the performance of transvaginal ultrasound during the first trimester are as follows. Obtain consent and properly position the patient. Use the proper transvaginal probe and appropriately apply ultrasound gel. This image demonstrates transvaginal probe placement and structures near the probe. The ultrasound of the uterus with the transvaginal probe is started with the notch of the probe at the 12 o'clock position and a mid-sagittal plane is maintained. The probe is inserted in the upper fornix of the vagina. The uterine fundus, the neck of the uterus, and the cervix can then be visualized. This image demonstrates a mid-sagittal transvaginal ultrasound view of normal uterine anatomy. Measurement of the uterus can be obtained and the length of the cervix can be measured. In addition, the anterior to posterior uterine measurement can be assessed. Characteristics of the endometrium, endometrial pathology, and endometrial thickness can also be assessed in the same mid-sagittal plane. A transverse view of the uterus can be appreciated by rotating the transducer head from 12 o'clock to a 90-degree counterclockwise direction, allowing a measurement of the maximum width of the uterus. This image demonstrates the measurement of transvaginal cervical length. With the transvaginal probe in place, the maternal feet and head orientation can be shown. This section of the course will demonstrate curvilinear transducer probe placement on the maternal abdomen. Each transducer has a notch on one side as illustrated. This is important for orientating the direction of the scanned image to the appearance of the image on the display screen of the ultrasound machine. A curvilinear transducer is usually chosen for obstetrical scanning. When scanning longitudinally on the maternal abdomen the notch should be placed towards the mother's head. This chart illustrates correct transducer manipulation and image orientation. When the transducer notch is towards the mother's head, ultrasound images of the upper part of the maternal abdomen will be displayed on the right side of the ultrasound screen. When the transducer notch is placed towards the right side of the maternal abdomen, ultrasound images located to the right of the maternal abdomen will display on the right side of the screen. The following videos demonstrate these concepts. In relationship to the maternal pelvis, the fetus may present within the uterus in any number of presentations. The most common presentations are cephalic or breech but other presentations are possible such as feet or shoulder. The fetal lie is defined as the long axis of the fetal spine compared to the long axis of the maternal spine. The longitudinal lie is the parallel relationship between the maternal and fetal spine. In defining maternal and fetal orientations and relationships, the definitions for specific planes such as anterior, posterior, superior, and inferior are important. The sagittal and coronal planes of the mother or fetus are defined here. In this illustration of proper transducer and notch placement, the notch is pointed toward the mother's head. 
The notch placement to the right shows important relationships. When the notch is to the mother's right, the the image will appear on the right side of the screen. Note the superior and inferior ultrasound planes. In this clip, note the notch placement for the transverse image of the fetal abdomen. When the transducer notch is pointed to the maternal right side of the abdomen with the fetus in cephalic presentation and the fetal back is down, the stomach bubble is identified on the fetal left side, in its normal anatomic position. This section will deal with ultrasound image labeling and storage. Ultrasound image labeling and storage and appropriate communication of ultrasound findings to other health professionals are extensively reviewed by the American Institute for Ultrasound in Medicine. Every ultrasound should be recorded and labeled so that a follow-up review can be documented. Still frame archiving may be sufficient for some applications while archiving for some types of applications, such as dynamic video or cine loop imaging is required. Patient and facility identifying information is necessary. The date and time of the exam, output display, anatomic location, and image orientation become part of the record. Requirements for digitally stored static or dynamic images are presented and must contain information for the metadata and analog records. Documentation is retained on all work. The requirements for worksheet documentation include patient identifying information, the date and time of the scan as well as the individuals performing or recording the events. Appropriate communication with the referring provider is stressed as well as documentation related to the ordering, performing, and interpreting physicians. Finally, requirements include respectful patient confidentiality, regulatory compliance, and applicable practice guidelines. Separate reports are necessary for each type of examination. This final section will deal with the protocol for transducer cleaning and disinfection. Guidelines for cleaning are published by the American Institute for Ultrasound and Medicine as an official statement. The aim for effective equipment cleaning and disinfection is to protect the patient and the level of cleaning depends upon the type of exam. Low-level disinfection is performed on external transducers between patients. Low-level cleaning prevents cross-contamination, while high-level cleaning requires high-quality single-use transducer covers. High-level cleaning requires transducer covers when internal transducers are used, or when internal and interventional percutaneous procedures are conducted. Changes were instituted during the COVID-19 outbreak including the level of disinfection for external and interventional procedures. Aspects of the ultrasound exam conclude Module 1 of Level 1 of Training. Characteristics of ultrasound equipment and official statements will follow. Please complete the brief quiz before going to the next module.